Welcome back to the program. Well, the long-awaited review into Australia's racial discrimination laws is in, and it's inconclusive. There are 22 recommendations from this joint parliamentary committee. No unanimity. Options put forward include changing the breach of 18C from offend, insult and humiliate to harass instead, setting the bar a bit higher for those wanting to take action. Another option, giving the option of truth as a defence. Yet another one, no change at all. Well, Liberal MP Tim Wilson has been a firm adjutant for major changes. He joins me now. Thank you for your time, Tim Wilson. Thanks, Tom. Uh, what's your take on what this, a uh, whole of recommendations, but it's fair to say the committee didn't agree on a lot. Well, I think the great outcome from this report is there's common agreement there's a problem with the law. Now, there's a dispute about whether it's in the test in the law or the process and how it's applied, but there is a common agreement there's a problem that needs to be dealt with and there's no clear pathway that the committee has said about how you seek to resolve it. But it does canvas options, and particularly mm. that option uh, around removing insult, offend and humiliate and replacing with harass was exactly what my submission to the inquiry recommended right. and is the, I think is the sensible way forward. Now, if th there seems to be, from my read on, a bit more agreement though around the process more than anything else, that the way it's worked hasn't been uh, all that effective. Is that maybe the better path to go down? You can see what happens with those changes before taking the more drastic action, if you like? Frankly, I think talking about the process is important, but it's a distraction. If the test in law forces a process because it's too loose and gives a large amount of scope, then fixing the process doesn't fix the fundamental problem uh, of this law. Because if we keep the current test in place of offend, insult, humiliate and mm. intimidate, rather than harass and intimidate, you still have a precedent which is being not just used in that law, but being replicated elsewhere. The law, for instance, in Tasmania that Archbishop Julian Porteous was hauled before an anti-discrimination body for defending the current definition of marriage was modelled on 18C. We need to cut the cancer out of the heart of these laws and so, get them correct. And what do, you, what do people want to be able to say? What sort of examples are we talking about? Well, I've written about this extensively. <coughs> there are some areas of bigotry um, that is based in culture and ethnicity and tradition towards other minority groups, which we should be free to stand up and speak out about, uh, even if uh, it's not necessarily reasonable or in good faith, because that sort of behaviour may not be done in reasonable good faith. Everybody needs to be right. equal before the law. And the point around harassment is, is a test that can be applied consistently for everybody in society. I just want to ask you as well about the PM's decision on this. If he goes down the path of, let's look at the process first of all, will you accept that? Because Barnaby Joyce, Scott Morrison is saying this is not a huge issue for voters. It's an important issue, but it's one that we should deal with and move on from. And will I support the Prime Minister? Yeah, absolutely. Whatever Prime the Minister. result? No, no. Well, we'll, 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 I'll obviously feed into uh, the process what I think. The government's considering it. They will take their time. But I think if they focus on fixing the test, uh, then they can also deal with so the not, process. So you won't accept whatever happens? You'll wait to see what happens? Well, I will maintain my view that exactly as it is. But I'm not of the view that I'm the keeper of all solutions. If the government comes up with a better outcome, that improves the state of this law and fixes it once and for all, of course I will support the government. Tim, I just want to ask you a little bit more about Treasurer Scott Morrison's comments this morning that people out in the regions and the country don't care about 18C because the way I see it is that this is a, a statement about free speech and people don't want to see a bunch of students dragged be before the courts and spending mm. thousands of dollars to fight uh, their case over an, some inane remark on social media. Do you think that, you know, restricting free speech has something to do with the rise of populism and people like Pauline Hanson out in those areas? Well, I think it does, and I think some of it's justified and some of it's unjustified, but when people see essentially political correctness instilled in law, as it is under 18C or Section 17 of the Tasmanian law, uh, people become increasingly uh, anxious and nervous about, one, where has our cultural confidence gone? Where has the basis of our society, a liberal democratic one, where people are able to stand up and speak out and say unpopular things, where has that gone? And I think it's very important for people to know that they can have their liberties protected. But the government's right. The primary focus should be on dealing with issues of cost of living, keeping uh, power prices down, but that doesn't mean we can't walk and chew gum at the same time and deal with these important issues. Just very quickly, finally, penalty rates, happy with that decision? Thumbs up, ready to advocate strongly for it? Well, I've always said that I will uh, support measures that increase 
the number of people to get jobs and to get youth unemployment down. Now we'll wait and see how this is implemented, but I think we have to focus on job creation because that's what gets people uh, the sense of dignity and stability and opportunity in life. Okay, I know you're short on time, but Tim Wilson, thanks for your time today on Sky News. Thanks, Tom.